We've devised a small experiment called BPM2, which we are conducting here before the initial tests on BPM5. The idea with BPM2 is to do a simple motor which allows us to evaluate uh, some additives to the fuel composition. The fuel composition uh, to be used in BPM2, BPM5 and eventually BPM100 uh, is based on ethanol uh, and the, uh, ethanol and, and water. Uh, we're diluting the, the ethanol with water to lower the uh, combustion temperature and to enhance the uh, the heat capacity of the mixture. However, uh, water has the uh, downside that it, it lowers the efficiency uh, of, of, the, uh, of the combustion. So we are evaluating a, uh, another approach where we are adding an additive called TEOS to the fuel mixture. And the idea is that TEOS will allow us to lower the water content, so we hope, if it actually works, um, by De depositing a, uh, a, a thin film of uh, sil silicate oxide on the inside of the uh, motor chamber as the motor runs. Um, TEOS in itself is not a, a, a new concept. It's been used before in, in locks and alcohol motors way back uh, in the 60s and the 70s where people were experimenting with different types of motors and uh, as recent as uh, the uh, Armadillo Aerospace flights with the, uh, the Lunar Lander Challenge and other experiments. Uh, this additive has been used. Uh, however, it's not really uh, known in literature or quantified in any distinct measure how much uh, or how efficient it is in lowering the, uh, the heat transfer from the combustion to the chamber wall. So we know the effect is there, but we don't know how much uh, we can expect from it. And this is exactly what BPM2 will test. So we've devised this simple throatless motor and uh, it is throatless uh, due to the fact that we want the, uh, a, a whole range of, of operating pressures uh, throughout the chamber. So, so in, in a conventional rocket engine you have the, uh, the throat at the, uh, as, as, uh, the, the constricting point. And um, that means that th this, the throat is the point where the flow transitions into supersonic velocities or sonic velocities. So your Mach, Mach 1 disc will be at the throat area. And in a throatless motor, that, that's not the case. Uh, essentially, your, your Mach 1 disc will be at any point uh, in, in the tube where the combination of the external pressure and the internal pressure and any uh, deficiencies in the, in the quality of the tube makes uh, a condition where the flow stagnates. So that means that the pressure will gradually decrease throughout the, uh, the chamber instead of being fairly constant and then decrease at the point where the, uh, the chamber contracts into the throat, which is normally the case and is the case in, for instance, BPM5. This means that by putting uh, thermal elements at different points uh, on the outside wall here, we can look at the, uh, the heat transfer uh, at different operating pressures in the same, same motor run. So ideally what we are going to do in, in BPM2 uh, is to do a series of tests with different uh, mixture ratios of uh, fuel, based on ethanol and water and tears to evaluate what, what mixture ratios gives us what heat transfer uh, coefficients. So uh, I can illustrate that by, um, for instance, what, what we quantitatively or qualitatively what would want to see is that once you ignite the motor, of course, your, your tube here will be at room temperature. And then uh, the heat transfer will ramp up that temperature uh, quite rapidly, but normally if, if we take for instance this temperature sensor here, what you would see for the mix that we normally use, that would be ethanol and water in 75 to 25 percent mass ratios, would be a, a ramp up on the air looking something like this. And the temperature will then stagnate at some point. In a throatless motor like this, without any cooling, this temperature point will be far beyond what the tube can withstand. So essentially the tube will break uh, if you allow it to run for long enough. Uh, the concept then is that adding tears to this mixture will 
retard this evolution in temperature somewhat. So instead of getting this ramp, you will get a different ramp, presumably a slower ramp and a, a offset in your stagnating temperature. Still, the, uh, the temperature here will be too high, so the tube will still fail, but it should survive a little longer. And this delta in temperature and in, in gradient will allow us to quantize the, uh, the heat transfer coefficient. So, so from this simple experiment, we can evaluate what, how, how efficient is TIRS, or the TIRS additive, when compared to the, uh, the normal mixture of, of water and ethanol. And in the end, we're, we're going to do a, a whole range of different uh, combinations. And uh, we'll also do a, a combination where we only use ethanol and a small percentage of TIRS and simply eliminate the water entirely.